Chain Chomp likes to chomp on snack foods like Cheetos, so it's no surprise that today he brought with him Chester Cheetah and Too Cool to Fool for your Sega Genesis. Uh, I guess that's fitting label art. Let's go ahead and zip to Hip City and find out how this game holds up today. Let's go to the game. This review is being done after a challenge from the Genesis Gems podcast, who apparently couldn't agree if this game was good or garbage, so now it's up to yours truly to break the tie. Unless I call it a gem, which would really mess everything up. Chester Cheetah, Too Cool to Fool, is based on the 1986 mascot for the 1948 snack. This was done at a time when Chester was in more of a rhyming mood. It was published by Kaneko and carries the copyright year of 1993. Mad Eugene the zookeeper has stolen Chester's motorcycle, chopped it up into several parts apparently so he could sell it easier on the black market later, and hidden it around the zoo. Now it's up to you to find the parts and put your motorcycle back together because you know, if there's one thing cheetahs are good at, it's assembling complex machinery. Chester Cheetah is a platformer for one player only with one standard mode of difficulty. The game is comprised of five levels. You only get one life with a four hit life bar that can be refilled if you find the paw shaped Cheeto snacks. You also get five continues which will send you to the beginning of the level you last died on. To complete a stage you must reach the exit with a piece of your motorcycle which will either be hidden somewhere in the stage or awarded to you after defeating a boss. You use the d-pad to move Chester, the b button to dash, and the c button to jump or to flap the wings of the butterfly that you are flying on in the final stage. You can jump on most enemies to knock them out, however you cannot dash until you find the white sneakers in a level. Yeah, that's right, despite the fact that Chester is a cheetah, he moves very slow until you find these mythical shoes. I guess that's what happens when you sit on a couch all day eating processed cheese snacks. But when you do get the shoes and press the B to dash, it takes a moment for him to get going. So they must be Reebok pumps since you gotta give him a little time to pump them up. There are other items you can collect as well. The smaller circle icons can be collected to give you points at the end of stages. Touching the sunglasses will make the background black and white revealing hidden items. So that's what happens when you wear two pairs of sunglasses at once. Finding the guitar will make you invincible as you slowly jam away unless you fall into the water hurting yourself which is what will happen if you touch the guitar in the third stage. Now that is what I call super programming. Occasionally Chester will ride on boats, minecarts, and the aforementioned butterfly and in a single bonus stage on a skateboard. Actually, I found the controls when Chester was off foot to be more enjoyable than when he was on. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looked nice and cartoony, especially Chester and his facial expressions. Now, while the Genesis Gem crew found the music to be enjoyable and a high point of the game, I personally thought it was merely okay and not that memorable. As far as family friendliness goes, the game does contain some Looney Tunes style animated violence. At the time of my research on eBay, loose copies were being sold for about $13, but no one was buying them at that price. But there were some complete copies that were selling between $10 and $29, and those prices include shipping. So what did I think of Chester? Cheetah Too Cool to Fool. Overall, I found it to be boring and at times a frustrating platformer. Some of the vehicle moments were cool, but I did not like the sluggishness of Chester on foot, which is how he spends most of the game. Nor did I like the several cheap hits I encountered while playing. I also thought that the level design could have been better, as it wasn't always clear what I was supposed to do. For instance, when you encounter a boss fight, you might need to simply wait until a motorcycle part appears, or you might have to attack them in a special manner, however it's not very clear exactly which one the game wants you to do, and it basically comes down to trial and error, which I'm not a fan of, especially since if you die trying to figure it out, you'll have to restart the entire level, moving sluggishly the way Chester does until you get another crack at it. So if I was going to rate Chester on the Jess's gem scale of either gem, good, or garbage, I would have to put this one in the trash bin. I'm sorry, host Rob, you may have liked this one, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and apparently most of us need special glasses to appreciate this one. So where am I going to rank Chester on my own list? Well, as you could guess, pretty low. Actually, I thought the much maligned Bubsy was a more enjoyable platformer at 13, as well as the awful Mighty Max at 14. And I would even prefer another lame battle with balls with a Z at 15. So out of 16 games I reviewed on the Sega Genesis, I'm going to put the sluggish Chester Cheetah too cool to fool all the way at the bottom. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click like and subscribe? And if you'd like to find out more about the Genesis Gems, you can go check them out at their website, GenesisGemsPodcast.com. 
thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and beware of orange fingers and chunks of cornmeal getting stuck between teeth. <laughs>